Welcome everyone to episode 21 of the Missing Pieces podcast. If this is your first time watching here on YouTube or listening anywhere that podcasts are available, this is where I sit down and I discuss my life and Lego and anything else that was on my mind from the last week. And what's on my mind right now when we start this episode is the feedback from last week's episode. I always like to go back, I read the comments as they come in, but I always like to go back before I start these episodes to see what people are saying and see if there's anything that I wanna pull from that. And I have to say, you guys are really amazing to me. Everyone is just so positive, especially in an episode like last week, in fact, the last couple weeks, where I'm discussing kind of a topic that's kind of polarizing like Patreon. You guys have done nothing but support me and it makes me wanna just keep doing this and do more of this. In fact, I really love, and I think, I've talked about this before, I think this is my favorite thing that I do on this channel where I just sit down here, I discuss what's ever on my mind. You guys essentially become my therapists and the best part of it is you don't charge me anything for any feedback and it's, it's just great. So thank you guys so much for bearing with me, like I said in the last couple episodes where the thing that was on my mind was Patreon. I'm gonna give you a quick update on this right now, but this episode, we're actually gonna take it back to Lego because I feel like we've kind of strayed off course and maybe that's something that some of you guys want. You wanna know like my, my deepest thoughts on everything, but some of you guys just wanna know what I'm collecting and what I'm interested in. So we're gonna find a nice balance here. Let's talk about Patreon for just a moment. The last couple weeks on Patreon, ever since I kind of made the decision that I'm gonna take that this Patreon route. I'm not gonna monetize the videos that are made for kids and see if I can make a run at this. You guys, once again, have been nothing but supportive. We've put on, I think we started a couple weeks ago with 40 patrons and we are now up to 64, which just became 65 this morning, thanks to Daniel, who just took one of the last two remaining $25 Patreon slots. In fact, I actually sold out of those. For $25, you essentially get into a group call with us each month and we just talk about whatever. And it's, we actually did our first one yesterday and it was so much fun just getting to meet all the people that, that are a part of it. And I, I wanna do more of it. Not everyone can make it, so I'm gonna probably do one like two weeks from now. And I was like, this is, this is awesome and I wanna do more of these calls. So I opened up two new slots and one of them went this morning. But if you want the last slot that's available, at least for now, it is available and the link is down below. That's my last pitch on Patreon. Other than that though, this week we also did our first private live stream. I made my first video that was made for just one person. And that felt really strange doing that. But it was also very cool because it was like super intimate and I could actually talk to the person that I'm making the video for. But it felt really weird putting a video on YouTube that I, I felt really like proud of. And I was like, there's only gonna be one person that watches this. But that's one of the perks as well if you go up to the higher tiers. And I'm not gonna go into that here, but it's been, really rewarding making these Patreon videos. Again, like it's weird for me because I want to share everything with the world, but I'm finding the only way, and I, it's kind of proven that with with how much this has gone up since since I've decided I'm going to do exclusive content. It's, it, it, I feel like I'm, I'm holding something back, which I don't do in any, any aspect of my YouTubing, which you can see here. And I think that's the first time I've ever used the word YouTubing, but I like to put everything out there. I like to share everything. And it's just like, I don't know, I feel compelled to do it. And to make something that I'm like, okay, you you 10 people get this. It's weird, it's weird for me, but it's obviously something that I need to get used to with the way that uh, the atmosphere here, here is on YouTube, at least for now, we'll see how this all pans out. Maybe things don't, won't be the way they are now, but for now, I think I think this is gonna work out. And I wanna thank all the, the people that have joined me for uh, for Patreon and thank you for supporting me, just like everyone else that's, that's watching this as well. Everybody here is, is has, like I said, have been so good to me and I, I, I can't share my appreciative my appreciation enough with you guys. So that's that's gonna be it for Patreon. Just know that it's it's going really well. This week was was interesting and it was fun putting that content out there for everybody. But I want to talk about something next that I meant to talk about last week, but I just I don't know I don't I don't know where I got lost. I guess it wasn't on the outline, but you guys wanted to know about this. My thoughts on Lego Masters, which is a show. Do I need to explain what Lego Masters is? Let's just say it's an awesome show where competitors in groups of two compete to uh, make the best Lego creations or mocks or whatever. And there's different challenges on what you have to do within the first two episodes, which is where we're at right now, have been, it's been awesome. It ri reminds me of a show that I used to really love and I'm like super embarrassed to tell you guys this, but I, I, <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. I used to really love this show called Project Runway, which was essentially, it was, it was Lego Masters, 
which again, if you don't know what Lego Masters is, this is gonna help you, but it was a show where people competed to make the best garments, like uh, dresses for, for the runway, like fashion and stuff. And then they would show them and then fashion designers would judge them and people would, would kind of get like voted off and then there would be a winner at the end. And this is essentially that with Lego, which surprise, I'm way more interested in Lego than I am fashion as evidenced by the clothing that you see me wear in all my videos. But the show is so good. The first episode like really was really, uh, awesome for me because it was a roller coaster theme park type thing. And you guys know that I want to make classic land, which is going to be over here where all these boxes are in the Brickitech studio. And if you're listening to this, it doesn't even matter because you can't see it in, even on video. But I was really excited to see that one. And there were some amazing creations that came on there. Some things that weren't so amazing, but I, I don't really want to judge because I know for a fact that you know, people have been like, you should win on Lego Masters. And I'm like, have you seen what these people are making? It's some pretty awesome stuff. But I really love the one from a guy I'm actually subscribed to, Boone. And I wish they would tell people that he was a YouTuber because I think it could help his channel out quite a bit. But Boone built this place called Timbertown, I believe. And it was this awesome roller coaster that had this lift that went up like this. And then the roller coaster would go down through it and it had so much character and stuff. But unfortunately for him, it would have been the clear winner, at least in my opinion. But unfortunately for him, it got to the very end and they had to demonstrate how their uh, roller coasters and their amusement parks worked and his lift thing didn't work properly so they ended up kind of like being scared they're going to get voted off luckily no one got voted off but everyone really did an awesome job and it, it kind of just came together and I, I thought the first episode was really fun will arnett who's the voice of lego batman is the host and he's he's pretty hilarious uh, I liked his style until I kind of got into episode two, which was this week's episode. And it, it kind of starts to wear thin a little bit as it as he kind of tries to keep the, the thing going. But I don't think anybody could really do it better, I wouldn't think. And I, I do like his style, especially when he does like these creative ways to go to commercial breaks. But this last episode was essentially drop test and explosion test, which I thought was awesome. Everyone had to make like a space related or space themed uh, mock and then they either had to drop it blow it up or hit it with a baseball bat and There were the things that people make they had I forget how many hours they had on this but the things that people make Mind-boggling it's it's cool, but there was like this giant alien there was I like boons again which was like these this these kids watching or playing a video game and then inside that it almost came to life it was it was cool. I should probably do these episodes like right after I watch it, but all I can say is I'm really enjoying the show. My biggest fear of Lego Masters is that it's just going to be a one season and done thing. I'm worried about the, the people out there that are interested in it. I know like my household, obviously we are, but we're not like the normal... I guess we're sort of normal, but we're not like the normal family that just is like sitting down to watch TV on a Wednesday night and you're like, oh, maybe we'll watch this Lego show. But I think there's enough interest from kids, obviously. And then there's there's dudes like me that have young kids that have nostalgia for Lego from when they built back in the day that maybe it can survive. I think the women demographic's probably pretty low, but they have a lot of women on the show. And it's cool because the show does feature like a whole broad spectrum of people. It's not just young, like 20 year old guys that, or just got out of school and they still have some interest in Lego. It's not, it, it, there's, there's older, there's older men, older women, there's, there's everybody. And it's, it's, um, I think it's going to be a really cool show to follow. And I'll give my updates each week, maybe here on missing pieces and how I, how I feel about that particular episode. But I just kind of want to let you guys know how I feel about it. And also why I don't think I would be very good for the show as much as I think Clark and I could probably entertain the world with our antics and maybe even show up Will Arnett somewhat. I, I don't think that we would survive the actual contest part of it. We'd probably be the first, the first group voted off as much fun as that would be. But you never know. There's this guy and his son that are on the show, and they, they, they're all grown up. So maybe, maybe uh, Lego Masters Season 20 or 40 or something like that. Maybe we'll be on there, and, and we, can, we can win this thing. we got to practice, though. So that was, that's my thoughts on that. Um, speaking of, of questions that I get, I mentioned why, why didn't we go on Lego Masters or that we should go on Lego Masters. Another question that I saw this week, I think it might even been on the missing pieces or maybe one of the other the videos, uh, was a question that uh, should I, I, or a suggestion, I suppose. It said, uh, you should make a video reacting to your old videos. And just the thought of that alone was enough to make me shudder because... I always tell people this, if you're ever thinking about making a YouTube channel or a Lego YouTube channel or whatever, and you're worried that your videos aren't going to be good enough, go back and watch the first hundred videos on Brickitect 
and it will boost your confidence like nothing else because they were they're really bad. And that this the bad thing about that was that I was already making videos for like a year or two on my other channel, which is my vlog channel, which is, is, is done really well since then. But I was just very, I, I guess, very nervous and not comfortable on camera. And I still feel that way somewhat. Um, and I, I did my best trying to, I guess, replicate what other people were doing, which was kind of just like showing a Lego set. You don't really appear in the videos at all. And they're just, they're just super bad. But I, I don't delete these videos. I leave them out there because I think it's good to know where you came from and where you're at and where you're going. And I like to see that progression. And I hope that the video that you watched from me a year ago isn't as good as the video that you're watching from me now. And I hope the video that you're watching now isn't as good as the video you watch a year from now. So if anybody wants to go back and watch those, I don't recommend it. But if you wanna go back and watch my first few videos, you can. I still stand behind my very first video, which was like my mission statement on here, which is essentially to rekindle my childhood love for Lego and share that with the world. And I had no idea at the time that I'd be doing that with my son in the future. And, uh, I guess I didn't realize it at that time, even though that was kind of like a vlog style, I realized a little bit later that I, I couldn't do the videos the way that everyone else is doing them. I had to do something different. And that was to share me and share my passion and why I'm doing this and what I love about this. And I think that is the reason that this channel has, has done as well as it has, because instead of connecting with a Lego set, you're able to connect with with a, with a human being. At least I hope so. And that's what that's why I make these videos. It's to it's it's to, to document my progress as a Lego collector, to share my experience with this, my son, and show other people that that can be done, and hopefully inspire them to do it. But also to show you just where we're going with this, and uh, I guess to get you, get you into this the the. the our universe, I suppose, I, to almost make this like a Marvel <laughs> thing. I'm gonna bring you into the to the Greg universe here and uh, make you a part of it. And I, I, that's what I take great pride in. And um, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. I really love what I do here. Have I mentioned that before? I, love, I just, I'm just such a lucky guy. I say this all the time. I feel like I've won life's lottery to have the ability, not only, to, I love my family and I feel very fortunate for them, but to have the ability to do something that you're passionate about and to to make a living doing that, it's just, it's incredible. I don't know how many times I could say that. And I don't say that to brag. I don't say it to make you feel bad if you're doing a job that you don't like. I can only say that to inspire you to maybe try, whether it's YouTube or, or whatever it is, whatever it is that you love in this life, go all in on it and see what you can turn it into. That's, there's a vice attack for you. Um, I, wish I, I wish I could, find a way to make everyone feel what I feel right now. And I hope this lasts as long as, as long as it possibly can. I, things worry me with the whole YouTube thing, but you know, I, you, you have to adapt and you have to find ways. And that's kind of what we've been doing in, in like the last few weeks. And I feel like that's, that's going the right direction. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, and that was kind of alluding to uh, Patreon, which I have a message from a Patreon detector that I want to share with you here. I actually got her permission to do this. In fact, I think it was a suggestion uh, of hers. Uh, this is from Monica, one of our, our newest patrons. Uh, and I'm not gonna give you her whole backstory. I don't know how much of that she wants to share, but I'm gonna kind of pick up kind of in the middle here. Uh, she said about three years ago, I need an outlet. She actually has a question for me here, which is why I'm sharing this. And I thought I would share it with you as well. She says about three years ago, I needed an outlet that wasn't work-related and I decided on Lego. My son and I spent endless hours building them as he grew up. So that brings back memories just like you and Clark are doing. Priceless. I've done tons of architecture sets and many others. My goal now is to do my first mock. I adore Harry Potter and I spent tons of money on various pieces that correlate with what I already have. I'm on the fence about destroying the sets already built to use in my mock. Maybe you could do a video with your knowledge, experience, and some uh, somehow help me decide whether it's worth treating or, or tearing down retired sets. You and Clark have been such an inspiration to me and my 10 year old stepson. Uh, you were my first YouTube subscription and watching a family share their passion for Lego has made a smile on the, has made me smile in the toughest of days. I'm gonna get emotional here, Monica. Uh, I truly hope that your Patreon grows to insurmountable goals and you carry on the legacy of Lego with Clark. My love to you and yours, Monica. And ah, could I get through a missing pieces episode without crying. <laughs> that should be that should be the, the the bet that we put on to each episode, or that should be what I title it. Can Brickatech make it through a missing pieces without crying? I just I don't know. I just feel passionate about this stuff and I get emotional about these things. So I apologize for that. But I thought Monica brought up a really good topic here about whether 
these sets that you've you've spent money on and spent the time building and that you really love and maybe you have them on display but you have this this calling to make a Lego mock and you kind of want to use the pieces from those should you tear those down or should you go and try to just you know buy the pieces that you need for your mock and for me I think it comes down and this is going to be different for everybody but for me it comes down to what are you going to get more enjoyment out of are you going to get more enjoyment out of seeing a set sitting on your shelf and maybe thinking about the time that you built that, whether it was with your son or maybe it was a certain time in your life that you, you know, you weren't feeling the best about something and that Lego set brought you joy. And when you see that thing sitting on your shelf, it reminds you how much you love Lego and what power it can have in your life. Or is it a situation where that thing sits there and you're like, yeah, it's just sitting there getting dusty. And what I'd really love is to turn that Hogwarts Express into like the UCS Hogwarts Express or something like that. Or I want to turn the the great hall into the even greater hall and you're, you're thinking maybe you could use those pieces more effectively there and enjoy them more there and I think that's where the decision has to come from and I think it also depends on how much you have like if you are getting overloaded with with sets and they're like coming in on you basically maybe that's the time that you should start doing that but if you just have a few sets on display my recommendation in that case would be probably to go find the parts on BrickLink that way you don't have to um cannibalize the sets that you have and you can keep them whole and if it's a theme that you really love like Harry Potter for example and say you have like the entire collection I don't know if you necessarily want to take all those pieces out of what could be something that's like very valuable and then put them into a into a mock it's really a tough situation I guess there's this other element to it too that comes down to finances like say you spend all this money on these Lego sets and you don't really want to drop hundreds of dollars to build this epic thing that you have in your mind it could be a good way to pull um, again I think it just comes down to each person individually for me I'm kind of at the place right now where I'm not getting enjoyment out of seeing boxes sitting on shelves or seeing sets sitting on shelves for the most part. I, what I really want to do is what you're doing, Monica, or want to do is, and that's start making mocks and being creative. And especially for me, I want to share the things that I make with the world and get your guys' feedback, which I'm starting to question whether I'm just going to always going to get positive feedback on things like that. Like I'd really love if I make a mock for people to be, you know, not negative, I guess, because that's just going to hurt my feelings and I'm going to be crying for a whole different reason. But I, I want people to be like, hey, I think you could take that thing and make it better for this. And um, there, there is this thing with being a Lego YouTuber or just a YouTuber in general, I find that even if you, you feel like the thing you did isn't that good or, or whatever, people are always like, hey, great video. That's awesome. And it really boosts you up. And that's another reason that I love making videos. It's like a, it's a huge self-esteem booster and stuff. But um, I, I would hope that people would be honest. And I feel like through sharing something that you're making with the world, maybe you can make it better because of suggestions you get. And I've, I've absolutely done that before with, with things and taken ideas from people to make videos. And it's, it's, re it's really cool. Uh, that's the, another reason that I love having comments when I can have them too. But from, and Monica, your, your situation, it's for you. I, I don't know. It seems like you have, you have the finances to probably get the pieces and stuff. So if you really love Harry Potter, my recommendation for you, and I don't know if you meant for me to, to actually make a video specifically for you for this, because Monica did, did sign up at the tier that I'll be making videos specifically for her, just like I did this week. So I'll have to come up with some, another idea for you, Monica. Maybe I'll make a video of me taking one of my sets and, and putting it into my collection to show you that it, it it's not as painful as it may seem. But I, I'd say for you, I would keep your Harry Potter stuff intact and uh, enjoy that and then try to get the pieces that you need through BrickLink or from, from outside your collection. Although, dang it, you said you just kind of got into it a, a few years ago and, and this is all you've really collected. For me, I go to yard sales and I get like bins of stuff. So I end up with, uh, with tons of pieces, but it's a tough question. Jeez. That's a really tough one. I'm glad I shared that. I'm curious to see what your guys' feedback is on that. In fact, I think that'd be a great topic to discuss in next week's episode. We'll, we'll give Monica advice in the next episode and I'll share some of the, the feedback I get from you guys on and what your thoughts are. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree. Should Monica cannibalize her Harry Potter sets and, and build something cool out of it or should she keep them intact? You guys be the judge. So uh, I wanna talk about something else from this week that's kind of, this, there's really no good way to segue to this, but the Brickitect unboxing utility knife. I told you guys that the Brickitect knife or unboxing knife I've had for years and it's starting to get kind of dull. And I, I was thinking maybe a better way and I've seen other people use utility knives. And I was like, you know what, maybe I'll try that out. So I got this utility knife. I made a dramatic video about how I was no longer going to use the Brickitect unboxing knife. We're gonna make a shrine for it and all this stuff. And I attempted to use that utility knife 
And all I can say is that it does a really, 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 really good job. In fact, too good of a job because the set that I that I built as a as a solo video this week, uh, which was for Chris, I should say, uh, it 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 cut the tape just fine, but it basically wants to cut right through the the cardboard as well. So it's like. I'm gonna damage my boxes with this thing. And also I was thinking about the whole situation with punch tabs. I don't know if I have one nearby, but you know with a, with a utility knife, the, the blade only comes out slightly. And with those punch tabs, what I like to do is to wedge my, my actual knife into where the glue is and then go down through it to loosen that glue up so I can use open the box up without punching the tab. And I can't do that with a utility knife and I, I just have a feeling that it, the utility knife, when you actually care about boxes, which at least for this moment right now, I still do. I don't want to, but I still do. I think the utility knife might be a little too much. And it, it, I know it doesn't seem as aggressive as a tactical knife, but I feel like I have more control with the knife. And I, I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to stick with my unboxing knife. I'm going to see if my father-in-law can sharpen up for me. He's he's a knife collector, so uh, which it probably offends him that I have such a cheapo knife that I bought on Amazon. But it's served me well so far, and I think if I get it cleaned up and sharpen it up, I think we could get many more more years out of it. And that makes me happy too because it, the history. So much on this channel is like the the memories and the nostalgia and the the progression and the journey and the the knife has its has a role here like there's all these like characters i guess that develop here and the knife has a role and i'd like to keep i'd like to keep using it i suppose and i have in the last few episodes you probably have seen that so we're we're going to keep rolling with that i'm curious to see what you guys think about that as well if there's anything from this episode that you want to uh, tell me i'm right or wrong on feel free to do that down below i appreciate it uh, we're going to move on here to something else that happened this week Actually, several things that happened this week. Behind me, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that the BrickTech backlog is on shelves. I'm not happy with how they're set up. It was kind of just a spur of the moment thing. I want to get all these boxes out of here. So I started started putting things on there. I did a little time lapse, did a video of it. It doesn't look good by any means. It doesn't look as, as awesome as it did in my old studio. But for me right now, this is just essentially a placeholder because I don't think I'm going to use these shelves at all. Uh, what I really want to do, I want to get some white tables, like some long white tables, and I want to line that the whole wall that you see behind me here with those. And what I want to do then is to take all of my sets and stack them on top of the white tables as kind of like on display or maybe have some sets that are built on display on top there. But underneath, I want to take my three bin drawers and I want them lining that entire wall that's full of like organized pieces and like stack-ons or whatever. I, I don't know what I don't know what I'm going to put under there, but I want to have storage under it. And I feel like that is the most effective way to, to maximize my space here in the studio and to do what I want to do going forward it, with with this channel in terms of, of being creative and making mocks and being less consumption and more creation is tables with sets on display. I mean, eventually the backlog is going to be gone if, uh, if all goes well. <laughs> but on top of there, I just like to have some sets that I really love and I want to have out and then below it storage. And if I want to sit over there and build something, I can do that. It creates al alternate angles to do things like this. And maybe I'll even do that over on this side. I don't know. I, there's, there's all this stuff that I want to do uh, that I dream of. And it, this place is kind of like a blank canvas right now. And I wish it wasn't because I, I see other people's spaces and I'm just like, oh man, that's so awesome. But it takes time and, and I'll, I'll eventually get there. I also, speaking of tables, I need to order... Oh, I want to get a white table to do our videos at. I'm no longer going to use the black table that we're perched upon right now. And I'm, I've been looking at Ikea. I've gotten a lot of recommendations for Ikea. I think I'm going to go with like a square one maybe. And we'll we'll kind of just try it out and see how it works. Uh, they're not overly expensive, but it's definitely one of those things that if I get this wrong, I'm going to be out some money. But uh, I just want to experiment with some different things and maybe work around this space and, and do things a little differently. In fact, like I guess what I'm trying to do is make this a little bit different from my last studio. I was doing a community group stream last night, which is, I guess, the next topic, and uh, bricked a lot. Couldn't even tell that I was in a new space because it looks so similar to my old space. And I don't want that. I want something new or fresh. I want to do some interesting things with lighting. I want to have like tables. I want to have my city. I want to have organization. I want it all, I guess. But uh, it's going to take some work, and we'll eventually get there. So let's let's kind of go off on that. The Saturday night community stream. I did that last night. I'm kind of, now that I've kind of set up here in my new space, I want to go back to the old days. And some of you guys have been around for a while, especially if you've been on BrickTech Live. You know that I used to do these community streams. It was called the BrickTech Cult, which was not the best 
choice of names, but it was kind of a joke, but then people got like offended by it. And uh, it's just me, me and a group of my friends and we just hang out and, and on Saturday night and build some Lego sets and, and talk and joke around. And I really had a fantastic time with that last night. And it's something that I wanna maintain consistently because it's, it's hard and I'm sure some of you guys, in fact, I'm gonna read I'm gonna read a review that we got here on Apple Podcasts. The topic that I wanna talk about here is finding other people that enjoy the same things that you do and how powerful that can be in your life. And this review is brought to us by Miles. He says, this podcast just makes my Sunday better. I love to listen to this while sorting or building my Lego. I love that it isn't just about Lego, but also about life. I get to reflect on things that have happened to me or ponder things that have yet to happen. Even as a 13 year old, great age. I think Lego is for everyone and this podcast makes me feel better about my somewhat childish hobby. I wish there were more people around me that I could bond with and just really talk about Lego. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, at my new school, we just moved and we have a club day once a month that are a ton of different options. And one of them is Lego. You get to sit, chill, talk, and build for like 45 minutes one day. That is so cool to me and I'm wondering what you think about it. Continue making these podcasts. They are truly amazing. Well, Miles, thank you so much for that review. I think that the Lego club is an awesome thing and that could be a great place for you to make friends. But even if you don't have people around you physically, like I don't, I can't walk out my, my door or whatever and be like, hey neighbor, do you love Lego? It's probably unlikely. So. I find that meeting people online through my community or in other people's videos and things like that is a great way to meet other people that love Lego. And if you start live streaming, if you have a Lego channel, which I don't know if you do or not, but if you start live streaming, you'll have some people that jump in there and you can form bonds with them. And these people that I've made friends with, we actually are friends in real life. In fact, last night I ordered my tickets for Philly Brickfest. I'm actually doing the four day, the whole thing this year. So if you're going to Philly Brickfest on Saturday or Sunday as like a, a part of the public, I'll be there both days. If you're going for the full four days as like a person that's doing like a display piece or whatever, I'll be there too. And I'd love to meet you and hang out with you. I know Jim Blade's gonna be going, Dave's gonna be going, trying to get Lego Freak to go. And I'm, I'm stoked. It's one of my favorite things. In fact, one of my favorite days of the last couple years is when I get to go to Philly Brickfest, meet my friends, see a bunch of Lego stuff, meet people from the from the community here. It's just, it's awesome. It's so awesome and such a good time. And I'm excited this year. I've only ever done like this, the just going for one day because I had Clark and Mrs. Brickitect with me. We just go for one day. This year, the full four days, I think is gonna be really awesome to have that whole experience. So I'm gonna go on Thursday and Friday. And then uh, Mrs. Brickitect, I think is gonna be coming down sometime on Friday with Clark Man. We're gonna be there all day Saturday. She's gonna leave Sunday morning. I'm gonna stay Sunday to meet people that can't make it on Saturday. And it's, it's gonna be great. I think I'm also going to do a meetup I'm not 100% on this, but I think I'm gonna do a meetup at the Lego store Friday afternoon, the one in King of Prussia. So if, even if you're not going to Philly Brickfest and you live in that area and you wanna come hang out with us or, or, or go Lego shopping or whatever, come, come see me there and uh, we'll, we'll set like a time up and I'll do a post or whatever and maybe we can hang out and hopefully find some Lego deals. Definitely, probably not the Lego store. We're not gonna find any deals there, but hopefully they have like a good promo that they're running and an awesome set just came out and we can, we can finagle that. So. I'm stoked about that, the four days, and uh, it's, it's gonna be so good. That's only a couple months away. If you're wondering, it's uh, I think the end of April. It's April 24th, something like that. Today's February 16th. It's April, April 23rd will be my Thursday, the day I'm going there. The public days are the 25th and 26th of April. So if, you, if you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, maybe you're in California, you wanna go all the way across the country to come to Philadelphia to hang out with us, which, I would have to make a video about that because that would be crazy. Come see us at Philly Brickfest. They're not paying me to say this. This is unsponsored completely. I just I just want to meet you guys and I think that's a cool way to do it. And it's a good time. You won't you won't regret it. It's not too expensive either, other than like if you're staying overnight or whatever, you have to find a hotel and stuff. So that takes me to my next topic. I need to find better segues. Um, how can I segue that? It's a lot of fun and exciting, just like looking for DC Lego collectible minifigures. <laughs> I did it, that was bad. Anyway, I've been looking for these guys for a little while. I actually went to Walmart last weekend or the weekend before looking for the DC CMFs. You guys know what I'm talking about. I have I have one of them here somewhere. I think Clarky might have stolen them. We got our first one yesterday in the mail, which you saw the video probably today. We got the Joker. I want these guys real bad. I see people getting them. I've seen people get entire boxes of them. I see people telling me that they get them at Walmart for $3 and change, even though the, the MSRP is $5. I went to Walmart looking, no sign of life there in the DC range. In fact, there wasn't much of anything new there. And then I we were going to grocery shopping this week. I ended up finally finding them at Wegmans, but they were $5. 
They had pretty much a whole box there. And a part of me was like, I'm gonna grab these. I'm gonna get the ones that I want. But then the other part of me was like, that's $5 each, Greg. You should probably be patient. Have some discipline as a Lego collector. This is this is not the way, my friend. You, you, you don't pay full price. It's not what we do here. So even after feeling a couple bags, and I think I, ha I think I had Batman in my hand, and I also felt the Flash there, which are two that I want. I put them back, and I, I, I didn't buy them. And a part of me kind of regrets, a part of me does, and that would have been $10 even if I got just those two. I think we can do it cheaper. I'm gonna wait for Walmart. I'd, maybe just a couple weeks, you don't know. I, just, I feel like they, they gotta come out eventually. They still have like, I forget what se what series they have there. They, they have the, I don't know. It, I don't even know if they have any, to be honest. They need to get those things on the shelf. It's frustrating. I wanna give you money, Walmart. And I, I don't, I don't wanna give you $5 each. I wanna give you $3 and change. But at that price, I feel very good about that. And I find it fascinating that Lego raised the price up to five I guess just for them to charge that. And then these stores are having them for $3.99 or less. It's uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that the, the price went up, the price actually went down. I'm trying to figure that out, especially on these DC ones. But I think they're cool. I'd love, I, there, there's some that I like more than others, but I'm gonna try if I can to get the entire collection so I can build one of my little stands because I feel like I need to keep that alive. The only ones that I haven't done that with in the last few years were the Harry Potter ones because I'm not much of a Harry Potter detector. I don't know who the characters are. I honestly don't know who many of the DC characters are, but I think they look fantastic and I'd like them to be a part of my life. So Sam Walton's family, if you're watching this from Walmart, please get the DC minifigures out there, please. I beg of you. But. We'll get them. We'll get them eventually. I'll work on it. What else do we have here? I think I have maybe one more topic that I want to discuss. And this is actually a suggestion from Lego Freak. Let me give him full credit for this. He was all excited that I was going to give him credit for this idea. It was only the vaguest part of this was his. He was talking about the Brick Tech Late Night Radio Show, which is a series that I used to do on Brick Tech Live where... When I was a little obsessed with live streaming, I would come down... After I've already live streamed that day, I would come down to the studio late at night as evidenced by the title, like 11 o'clock, sometimes in the morning, even like midnight. And I would do the Brick Tech Live late night radio show where essentially I just, it, it, there's no, nothing to see, it's just like a screen that's up. And people are in the chat and I reply to people and talk about things. And the my experience with it was, was incredible. It was a great time to be live streaming late at night because if you're a kid that's listening, hold, cover your ears because I don't want to offend you, but it was nice because all the kids were in bed and it was like more of an adult group of people that were that were a part of the streams. And we would talk about not just Lego, but about a lot of life stuff. And I really love that series. I've kind of gotten away from, from doing it, but I want to make a comeback on it. In fact, I want to do something that, I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think about this. I'm thinking about actually making its, its own podcast where the late night radio show is something that exists in real time and in, in live with with the people that are commenting because that's what we do. We just I do nothing but read read the chat and kind of reply to things and tell you my my philosophies on thing whether it be Lego or life. It's essentially what Missing Pieces is only like two years ago. And if you look back at the titles of some of these videos, there are there are some good ones. In fact, let me let me bring it up here as I as I continue to talk about this. So uh, Architect Live. Night radio show. This is a uh, compelling listening, I'm sure. And now I can't do th two things at once. All right, so some of these titles are interesting. Uh, Late night life advice is one. Uh, let's see. My wife and my life. That could be a good one to watch. I don't remember some of these. Um, let me keep scrolling here. Grego ideas. Draw a tech and lunch with my son. Viewer discretion is advised. Crazy new live stream feature. I don't even know what that is. Claw Machines, Kid Channels, Technology, and Lego YouTubers. Rant about worthless comments. Ooh, spicy. Let's talk mocks. Do I have a day job? What I really think about Jang Bricks. Oh my goodness. My thoughts on school and going to college. So it's not it's not just Lego. It's like all these questions that I get from people that I kind of go off the, off the deep end on, I suppose. And what I was thinking about doing with these, just to kind of bring this back on, on track, is I was thinking about taking all of the previous Brick Tech Live late night radio shows and uploading them as podcasts to the Brick Tech Live Late Night Radio Show podcast. So they'll all be sitting there. If you want to go back and listen to each of the episodes, I'll just number them in order of how we uploaded them. They might be a little discombobulated. It's not going to be like a thing where like this, because it's it's me chatting with, with people that you're not going to be able to see the chat and stuff. But it definitely is an audio experience. So what I was thinking is putting the backlog of those episodes on there 
and then starting it up again where I do a weekly series where each each week, like at a certain night, like say Wednesday night, I go live on Brick Tech Live to do the radio show and then upload it a little bit later as a podcast. So you, your best, and, and maybe not even keep it on Brick Tech Live, just have it be the podcast. That's where it exists after the fact. And you know, obviously I'm not doing this to like make money or anything. It's not, I don't have any grand scheme of like monetizing it. It's just something that I want to do and that I really enjoy as much as I enjoy this. My only concern with doing that podcast is that it might take some of my ideas away from this podcast. So I'm debating that, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to maybe, maybe get back into that. Cause I found that super rewarding. And uh, some people were saying that that was their favorite thing that I do. Just like some people say, this is their favorite thing that I do. And like I say, this is my favorite thing I do. I just love it. So I think that's it. I think that's it from last week. That's all the things that were were on my mind as as uh, as professed in the beginning of each episode. That was on my mind from this week. A lot more Lego talk this week, which I hope made you guys happy. A lot less Patreon talk, but still a part of my life. I'll give little updates, and I think this will be the place where I thank new patrons when they come on. Um, you know, just because I, I feel like they deserve that recognition. Uh, but that's it. If you guys have anything that you would love for me to talk about next week. Leave it as a comment. I would love to do that in like the viewer feedback column. Even if it's not feedback, if you just want me to talk about a topic, I'm always interested in, in talking about things, whether it's it's Lego related, life related, you can do that. If you want to support this podcast, there's links down below to do that. Obviously, you can become a Patreon detector. You can buy one of our Brickitech shirts. You can shop on Amazon using our link. Or if you want to do something that doesn't take much effort at all and you are actually listening to this, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. I'm going to count the number of reviews we have right now just to see if it goes up next week. Uh, we have 74 ratings right now, all of which but one are five stars. You can do whatever you want. You think this is a one-star podcast and you just sat here for the last 40 minutes or whatever listening to this, you can leave one star, you can leave five, but anyway, it kind of helps us out. And my goal, I'm going to show you guys this if you're, if you're watching. My goal is to somehow get out of that number four spot right here. I want to move up to number one. And I, I changed my, like a lot of my the way I discuss what this podcast is in the description. I didn't use the word missing pieces at all before. So I think when you bring up the words missing pieces as a search, it wasn't finding me. So I wrote this really flowery thing that says, missing pieces is the life and Lego podcast where Brickitech discusses his life, his Lego collecting journey, being a Lego YouTuber, raising a Lego enthusiast son, and any other topics interesting him or on his mind that week. Join him to share his successes, failures, stories while laughing and sometimes crying together. <laughs> missing pieces is one of the realest and most personal Lego podcast available. That's a little bit of hype. Uh, enjoy the podcast. And remember, we'll find you in the next Missing Pieces episode, which is a perfect way to end this. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Thank you for taking time out of your day, your night, or wherever you are to listen to this. I just really appreciate you guys. And I hope to see you here next week for Missing Pieces episode 22. And we'll find you. We have to end it properly. We'll find you in the next Missing Pieces. <laughs>